Welcome to our online worship service this day. This is a renewal or a refreshing service. We thank Mike Kemper for coming in person. So if you would like to join us, you are welcome to do so in person. We are also mindful that I am preaching at my cousin's funeral, only aged 53, younger than me. It makes me very sad that cancer continues to take good people out of this world. Please remember Rob and Karen and all the children in your prayers, the Rob Young family. May we know the good news though that we continue to live in God's grace and love surrounding us with life. May we know this gift of life and we do appreciate Pastor Mike Kemper coming and sharing in-person worship with us this day. Be with you 
all. And also with you. Come, let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Let us give God the glory. For the Lord our God reigns. Hallelujah. All nations come and worship you, holy God. Holy, 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 holy God. God. You, you are, are the beginning, the, the present, and all that is to come. All colors and races give hearty praise. Let us share your love with all. Amen. Chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If we had only died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain, rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the Cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading this morning is Psalm 78. We'll be read responsibly whole verse by whole verse. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. Bring down man upon them to eat, and give them praise from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. 
Second reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above and through and all, or through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a gift. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended in the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave was that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of one knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by the craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way to him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together in every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part of it is working properly, promotes body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite us to stand. We welcome the gospel, proclaiming the gospel acclamation as printed on page six. Alleluia, alleluia, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Sorry for the mistake, in your bulletin is the wrong scripture. So, I think it is. Yeah. So, uh, you will just have to listen. That's last week's gospel. Oh, no. I don't know what's going on. I skipped down. I skipped the paragraph. So, we're okay. Oh, shoot. I thought I made a mistake yet again. <laughs> And then I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> if I would have just plowed on, I would have been fine. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God, that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives light to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel <coughs> of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, peace be to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who feeds us and gives us new life. Amen. Have you noticed that signs are often misinterpreted? While we count on them to point us in the right direction, with everything from getting us to a new destination to figuring out our next steps in our lives, the occurrence of misreading signs is all too frequent. We anticipate clarity and expect a certain consistency in these signs. After all, a miscalculation will send us in a direction we might not want to go, perhaps a direction we shouldn't go. We don't want to end up going down a rabbit hole, and we rely on the advice and experience of others to help us avoid any kind of misjudgment that might leave us lost. Of course, essential to understanding a sign correctly is context. I was driving from Akron, Ohio, and I misinterpreted a sign that determined my route home from Trinity Lutheran Church. Going home one day, taking my usual route, I saw that the ramp on May 11th would be closed, and I thought, oh, okay, that's good to know. And so on May 11th, I went a different route, and I found that it wasn't that hard or even that much slower, but it was a little inconvenient. And then I found on May 12th that the ramp was still closed. Evidently, I interpreted that sign far too literally. The sign should have read, ramp closed beginning May 11th. I won't tell you how many times I made the mistake of going back and then shaming myself going, oh, I forgot again and had to go a different direction. But I learned that it takes about two weeks for the ramp to open up. In this second section of the Bread of Life chapter, which we began reading last week, Jesus begins to interpret his sign because Jesus knows just how easy it truly is to misunderstand. But before we get to Jesus' explanation, this week I found myself realizing how quite extraordinary it is that Jesus does take time to interpret. It fascinated me that he takes time to interpret his signs. I don't think it is Jesus' concern that we get things right, that we are secure with the correct answer. I believe, well, just maybe, that Jesus realizes how hard it will be to believe that he is what he has to offer. Indeed, later on in John 6, some of the disciples will decide to walk away. And Jesus will reference Judas's betrayal. Maybe Jesus recognizes that a little time to get used to the word made flesh, getting used to Jesus himself and a lot of conversation is exactly what all of us need. Or maybe Jesus knows our nature all too well, that we actively resist going in directions that lead to discomfort and uncertainty. It's so easy to go in the direction that we're comfortable with, the direction that we know with certainty the outcome. That we consistently reject, though, those paths that seem difficult, even disturbing. I know I do it. 
that we ignore the signs in front of us, and that we are always quick to turn to others' interpretations of Jesus before we are willing to listen and be open to Jesus' very own words. I think Jesus sees our fear, at least my fear, the fear of making mistakes, the fear of making a wrong turn, of post-choice remorse, my fear of having to justify our, my decisions, to validate the directions we decide to take, our fear of rejection, of getting lost somewhere out there, a place from which we do not know how to get back. I ran into a young couple coming from the beach from Lake Michigan, and I had gotten lost, I had gotten turned around, and I asked them where the beach was, and they just snickered and laughed. And I said, no, really, where is the beach? Because I didn't want to walk back to the beach and then back to the parking lot at that time. I was truly lost. And so when I said that again of, no, really, I need to know because I'm lost, they pointed behind them. And so I started following them back to the parking lot with Laura. And so what has to be revealed in these first verses in today's Gospel reading is that Jesus simply offers himself, simply gives a direction. Christ offers a relationship with him and with God to each and every one of us. And it's like that relationship I had with that young man who did finally answer, and I went up to him and thanked him for leading me the right way. Perhaps as much as we say we want Jesus in our lives, we want a relationship with Jesus, the fact is it's just plain easier for Jesus to be the answer to our prayers, the one who gives us what we want, and what we need, the one who responds to every desire that we have. Yet salvation is not a functional reality, and my friends in Christ, relationships are never, ever as straightforward as we want them to be, as we want those signs to be. That's why here and now, before we get too far into the many levels and many meanings of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus reminds us what the Word made flesh is all about. It's about being in a relationship with Jesus, but more so leaning into trusting in just what this relationship means for you and me. Yes, we might be like those who heard Jesus say, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. We might be following Jesus because we want something from him, but Jesus invites us to help work in the kingdom of God and have a relationship with him. Yes, we might take a wrong turn. A wrong turn might lead to a different place than where we think we should end up. It might mean that we actually are lost, but even if it appears that we are lost, even if it appears to be true that you believe that you are lost, Jesus knows right where you are. Yes, Jesus knows right where you are and comes to you, even when you feel lost even maybe when you are lost. Jesus knows that wonderful gift of giving you direction. So, before you believe in others to steer you on the right course, before you go to others to verify the connection between your behavior and your worth, perhaps we can utter Peter's words 
even if you might not believe them just yet yourself. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And perhaps we can trust Jesus when he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us be bold in trusting our Savior, who gives us life and provides for all our needs. Let us trust Jesus. Amen.
You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. We especially ask you to be with our ministry partners, Bishops Elizabeth and Craig, Assistants David and Roseanne, our Synod Companion, Settlement Lutheran Church, Gallon, United Methodist, Nashville, Minister of Music, Cindy, and Pastor Ken. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, we pray. <clears throat> you command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests, defend species at risk of extinction, and strength, strengthen the work, the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience and confronted with grievances and perseverances, perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Protect the lives of those who serve in the military, including Parker Stancil, Cody and Marina Crawford, Austin and Aaron Ansley, Alexis and Carlos Garcia, Brady and Cynthia Rosa, Joel Tagger, Kayla and Lance Champaco, and Julia Hare. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is greater. You draw near to those who cry out for, our, for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are in prison. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. We especially ask your presence with Doris Allerton, Vicki Argo, Walter Brown, Chris Bush, Cherie Clements, Joyce Doherty, Pat Wales DePew, Ray DePew, Mike Trupp, Megan Germain, Carl Goleman, Lisa Goleman, Larry Hansen, Mike Hoppy, Jay Kimball, Bill Melcher, Karina Palmer, Hope Palmer, Rick Palmer, James Secor, Mike Shoemaker, Michael Stifler, Kim Sullivan, George Ulrich Jr., Deborah Wilkie, Christy Winnick, and Dean Gray. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality, 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 I'm sorry, hospitality, for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon Darlene Olson as she will undergo surgery. Bless Cindy as she is caregiver in this time. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite us to stand and share a sign of Christ's peace among each other.
invite us to hand sanitize those precious hands. And then we will receive our offering prayer. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave up all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim that Jesus is among us. Amen. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus first taught. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Serve our makers with willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in God, and abound in thanksgiving. The blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. We sing this ending hymn. Thank you.